call to order this uh, meeting of the Planning Commission for January 13th. Uh, first, we have to approve the agenda. We have a motion. Uh, and can I make a, I'd like to make a quick addition to the agenda. I, I don't know if this is worth putting on the agenda, but I will just for the sake of transparency. Sure. Um, I'd like to add a really quick item uh, after we approve the minutes, and that is, um, I just had a question to Mike to ask whether or not the city has sort of, has any, has talked about um, the proposed changes to Act 250 that's sort of working its way through the legislature, and if so, what that is. Okay. Um. <laughs> Basically, we just did the, the agenda <laughs> item right there. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. Sure, we'll handle it that way. Yeah, so, yeah. so do we have do we have do we have the, uh, an approval with uh, Aaron's amendment? I will move to approve with Aaron's amendment. Thank you, Marcella. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, carry on. Thanks. All in agreement? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so we've approved the agenda. Uh, with Aaron's amendment for a new item six. Uh, and with that, we'll move on. Uh, comments from the chair is the next item, and the only comment I have right now is to remind everyone, uh, or first I should ask just to verify, although Google says it was delivered. Did everyone get the email about the legislative reception? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's uh, January 30th, five to seven, social event, completely optional. Free food, though, and you can bring someone else. So, it is a way to like get out in the winter. I've discovered. Um, so, uh, I think they want us to RSVP very soon. If you if you do think you'll go, I would encourage you to go ahead and RSVP right away. And I believe Jamie, who's collecting those, is moving on. That's what her email said today. Yes. Um, so the um, the Jamie's replacement is. Jasmine Lamb, and so um, her email would be J Lamb at Montpelier. That's a lamb like the animal. L A M B. Yes. At Montpelier. Dash VT. Dot org. Yep. Okay. But you can probably email back to Jamie, and it'll. She's continuing to keep an eye on her emails to forward things. Great. So if somebody doesn't have that and still wants to email back to Jamie, you can do that. Great. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, so with that, we can move on to unless any, Does anyone else have anything else? Aaron missed his chance. Hmm? You have to wait. Um, so there's asking me about anything else. Okay. So we'll move on with general business. Uh, this is where we can take comments from the public before getting into the rest of the agenda. Uh, we have one member of the public here. Is there anything you would like to address with the Planning Commission? Just here to watch. Super. Unless you want me to introduce myself. It's completely up to you. I'll introduce myself and tell you why I'm here. Sure. So my name is Whitney Shields. I live in Montpelier. I've been a resident for a year. Um, I work at the Center for Agriculture and Food Systems at Vermont Law School. Um, and so food policy is something that I is my career. Um, and I want it to be something that bleeds into my personal life as well. Um, the Planning Commission is a really good place to kind of just hear about what's going on and if food access is a topic that's discussed. Um, and so I'm hoping to go to a bunch of meetings in the next year just to observe and um, if I can give my expertise in any way, let me know. Okay, yeah. that's, uh, that's great. Um, so just to give you some more information about what we've been up to recently is we're working on redoing the city plan. Um, and uh, I think there probably is space somewhere in the city plan for to address to address food and, and, and those issues. Um, Mike could probably speak to what chapter would be most appropriate. Right now we're talking about housing. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. They intersect, though. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, great. There's also so, a couple of VLS grads up here. Can I just ask? I'm just curious. So when you say food access, are you thinking both about like food security and like community gardening in Montpelier or farming or yeah I'm just yeah I, I would be interested to know 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's a community conversation. Um, when I talk about food access, it's really that all um, folks living in Montpelier have access to affordable, healthy, nutritious food at all time. Um, and I think that food security in general is a concern, um, not only in Vermont, but in the United States. Um, and so that's really what I'm talking about when I mean food access. Um, what that means in practice, I guess it really depends. I think it's different for each city and each locality. Um, and so that's something I'd love to investigate um, with all of you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you. Um, okay. So with that, uh, it's time to approve the minutes from December 9th meeting. We did not meet two weeks ago. It's been a month. We're going to take a look at the summer nice meetings, minutes. So. I like that there's an exclamation mark. He'll sink into Montpelier Live. I think Montpelier Live has. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> that was a surprise. <laughs> then, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just very excited about it. <laughs> it's a declarative. <laughs> <laughs> Although I actually am not aware that that's a responsibility. I thought. I thought for which piece? The uh, about working on the the public art and the art chapter. Um, I was not planning personally to reach out to Montpelier Alive. So. No, I will be. Right. That's what yeah. I thought. Okay. So I don't think we need to fix that, but just to clarify. And also the commission. Did we talk about that last? Not that it needs to be in here, but the public art. The public art commission, commission? Yeah, would be. Yeah, there'll be another one that we'll be, I'll be reaching out to. Okay. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the city plan part. Okay. okay I move approve, approval of the minutes. Okay, do we have a second? A second. Okay, Marcella. <laughs> I wasn't there yet, so I feel like I Yeah, <laughs> good point, good point. So, uh, those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the minutes from December 9th are approved. Which brings us to the new item, which is Aaron has a question about Act 250. Yeah, this is more of a just question to Mike, which is, so, on the legislative agenda this year, the talking about modernizing Act 250, I know very little about the particulars of what is moving to the legislature, although I do, under, my understanding is a sort of broad brushstroke sort of understanding is, is that one of the things that's on the table is, is exempting designated downtown districts from mm -hmm. Act 250. Um, and so I was just wondering, has your office sort of been keeping track of this? Do you guys have an opinion on it? And I'm just because I think that something like that would certainly affect how the Planning Commission proceeds, especially since we're mm -hmm. looking at, you know, re revamping the town plan. And um, and since we've just set those, reset those boundaries, I just thought it might be worth sort of asking about that to see if Aren't they already exempt? <clears throat> no, they're partially exempt. It, it increases the threshold for certain projects like housing, but not everything ends up being exempt. Um, the proposed hotel and parking garage are in Act 250 um, simply because they count hotel rooms as Unit. dwelling units and therefore it exceeded the 50. So you can get up to 50 units without Act 250 in a designated downtown, but hmm. the hotel had too many rooms so it booted us into Act 250. It's like a subdivision. Yeah. Huh. So, kind of a strange, quirky rule, but that's, um, so this would just go through and say, if it's in the designated downtowns, doesn't matter what you're doing, um, it'll be exempt. So, um, there's, so to answer the question, there's been a lot of proposals. I worked with Vermont Planners Association on, they had some members on the task force or the steering committee that was working on it. And so then we had a committee that would kind of give input to them to take to the committees to work on it. There was a lot of work last year. And then apparently there was work that happened over the summer that people didn't know about between the administration and some, some key groups. 
and they kind of hammered out a compromise. So we're just learning about where that hammered out compromise stands and how that fit in with some of our recommendations. It's not that far off of what we were talking about. Some of these recommendations like exempting designated downtowns were some of the things that we had been talking about. Um, a lot of it is gonna come down to really key, obviously, uh, just the details. But um, certainly the Vermont planners had stressed, um, and we were by no means a unanimous group. Um, there are some people that really uh, wanted to expand Act 250 into more areas, and then there are other people who wanted to just narrow it down to the areas where it was most important. Um, but generally, there was support to exempt the designated downtowns. There was support to um, allow for um, what I would call removal of jurisdiction from Act 250. So some places go in and, and you've got a, a small subdivision that goes in with eight new houses. Once those houses are in Act 250, they, they remain in Act 250 and have to go through amended Act 250s for for different projects that, that come up because once you're in Act 250, everything stays in. And so the thought was, it doesn't make sense that, a, that somebody who lives in a house in a subdivision that was made in 1985 should be that much different than a subdivision from, you know, 1968. It's, you should be able to say, you've got to go through Act 250. Once we make the subdivision, once it's there, once it's sold, Act 250 would go through and say, yep, you met all of our requirements. We'll release you back to being regulated by the towns and not have to go back to Act 250. So there are a couple of proposals like that. Um, in certain cases, things wouldn't. Certain things, you know, cases, things would, you know, would be able to stay in. So it's, it, th there were some proposals like that. We've, we've been just tracking to kind of see where things go. I think this new proposal is going to be interesting just to see. There isn't anything that jumped out at me so far that was necessarily something I was strongly opposed to. Yep. Um, as it, certainly as it applies to our job here at the city, there's been some discussion of lowering the jurisdiction from 2,500 feet to 1,500 feet that wouldn't affect us. There's some um, exempting of um, the river corridor from traditional, from, from the neighborhoods. Um, there's a neighborhood designation, so there's a discussion of removing that. So, I mean, I think most of these are relatively small changes that won't affect us. Um, but I'll continue to be keeping an eye on it because it does make a difference for us. Um, the other one that we're keeping an eye on is there's a, um, a housing bill that's going through um, that could provide more funding for housing projects, which we think is a pretty, it's a pretty interesting bill. It has a number of, of different ideas in that. Um, there's another bill to allow municipalities to regulate Airbnb. Um, it hasn't been an issue here, but it's obviously something that could probably change pretty quickly if there was a sudden growth of Airbnbs in, in the city. Um, so that I think that was most of the, oh, and the last one that I've been kind of keeping an eye on is there's a, a proposal for what are called project-specific TIFs as opposed to having to do TIF districts. And it's something I'd been talking with the state on that I thought would be really helpful. Um, because a lot of times we get projects that come up that it's just a single project and should, why should you have to go through a huge process if, in, in our case, we had Caledonia Spirit that was coming in as a proposal, we couldn't do any TIF because it wasn't in a TIF district and it would take us a long time to do it. But what they had were utility needs. They needed to have the, uh, the water line moved, they needed to have the water line upgraded, and we needed to extend the sewer line um, to make that project happen. And it would have made a lot of sense just to go through and say, hey, we've got a project, we have you know, um, $300,000 in utility needs. This is a project that's gonna generate X in taxes. We could do a really quick TIF for this one project if, you know, and then go to the board, maybe go to the state board to get approval for that project, as opposed to having to do a whole district. Um, it's something now that we have a TIF district, we probably wouldn't need that, but it's an idea that um, I would be 
I think would be helpful for a lot of other communities. So those are the ones that I've been kind of keeping an eye on. But um, we have a representative from the Planning Association who keeps track of everything at the state and gives us weekly updates on on the bills as they're moving um, in the general opinion. So. Do you know the auditor's looking at TIFFs right now? I know the auditor's looking at TIFFs, yeah. yes. <laughs> there might be some waves around TIFFs for that. Yes, the, the auditor has made his opinions on TIFFs well known. So. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thanks for the update. Uh, with that, we can pop back into the city plan and reviewing and discussion of the Housing and Neighborhoods chapter. <clears throat> Do we know where we left off? Um, well, we had actually sent this back and gotten right, right. comments, and so I want to take a quick second to go over the, the, the little chart um, of the, the 13 chapters and kind of where they are um, right now, just so we get a sense of where what, what I've been working on and where we're going. Um, so the... Arts and Culture chapter, I, I haven't started that chapter. We, we talked about it with the historic resources and decided to pull out culture, create a new chapter with arts, and then to work with Montpelier Alive and the Public Art Commission to go through and start to develop that chapter. Um, I haven't put together the notes on that one yet. I, I Usually what I do is I put together some notes and then I meet with them to kind of give them some ideas of how to think about it and then I work with them to come up with some implementation plans. So that's one that's that's waiting um, along with community services. So I haven't started that one either. Um, but I'm hoping to start both of those in February. So economic development is one that I've had the notes ready to go and things were working. Um, and I had been waiting for the new economic development director to show up, Lisa Maxwell. Unfortunately, Lisa had to um, leave her position um, shortly after taking it, so they're going to not have a director for a while. So um, Dan from Montpelier Alive has agreed to work with me, and I'm going to try to connect with their the MDC board of directors to kind of go through the proposal. The, the implementation strategy, almost exactly like this, is almost, it's basically complete. It just needs to have the review of a committee to kind of go through it. Um, I had worked on most of it with the prior economic developer, and so I'm I'm in, I'm feeling that that this could get wrapped up relatively quick um, as soon as I get some opportunity to start working with Dan and them on that. Um, the energy plan. I'm still meeting with the subcommittee. We've finalized everything, and I'll be meeting with the subcommittee. The last week of January, and then I'll be on the MEAC agenda for um, February to to get that approved. So that one should that one's really close to being done. Um, governance will be starting in February. Um, I'll be working with Cameron, the new assistant city manager, on that one. Um, historic, the HPC is meeting tomorrow night, so that should be back to you guys for February. That'll be done. Um, housing, we made our comments. <clears throat> I made some recommendations for the priorities, the cost, and who, and I sent that back to the housing committee who made some changes and approved that. So this should be um, the last meeting we need for housing. Implementation is basically done. Um, land use, we have to do here. Uh, natural resources, I've met once with them and I was supposed to meet with them in December, um, but it was one of the nights I was having the snow squalls, and so I had to bail on that meeting. Is that the Conservation Commission? Conservation Commission, Is yep. the Parks Commission going to be in that one also? I, I'll have to, yeah, once I get the, the get it through at Natural Resources, the Parks Commission may be there, and they may be community services. It's kind of, I've got to kind of see where they're going to um, land. And they may be in a little bit of both. Um, public safety and CJC, I'm going to be starting in February. Transportation, I've been working with them. 
Um, I've met with them a number of times. Uh, they are a meeting with a subcommittee this week on Thursday to draft the, the goals and strategies. And then, because they've already approved their aspirations, I just need their goals and strategies. And then we will meet in February where they are going to try to approve in February. So you guys could have that for either the end of February or March. So they're going pretty well. And utilities and facilities doesn't have a committee. I have that chapter done. Uh, I just have to get some time to meet with the city engineer, um, talk with Kurt, and start to set up some meetings where we can review the draft for utilities and facilities. So a number of these chapters are going. Um, I think there are five, four or five of them, arts, community services, governance, land use, and public safety. So we've got five of them that are really um, need to get started, and I'm looking to get those started in February. So these other ones hopefully will start rolling in, and my hope is to have all these done by by June so we can start moving forward on the chapters themselves. Um, and I'd mentioned briefly at this, before the, the meeting started, uh, John and I met with um, folks for the ArcGIS hub, which I think is gonna work out well. It's, it's online. Um, we, John had done some stuff early on, which you saw online. And this is just a portal that'll give us an opportunity to kind of develop the plan chapters in this. It might give us a foundation for our web-based plan. So um, if we get that, that'll give us a good opportunity to kind of build build these chapters out as we, once the implementation plan is ready, that's the implementation plan isn't really gonna be on online. It's really gonna be the chapters that are gonna be online. Um, with the links to the implementation strategies. But that was kind of, so that was, it was good, but we have a couple of items we, I still need to work out so we can actually get online with that. And I'll check with Zach. So that's a 10 minute, five minute, just summary of, of where we're at coming into the new year. Um, and the, the council and city manager are now kind of looking and putting a little more pressure to to keep this, to get this moving, to start getting stuff um, moving towards completion. So I recognize we needed, we needed to keep moving this forward, but I think we've worked out um, a lot of the process and the bugs and the framework pretty well. So it makes it a little bit easier when we know where we're going. Um, now it's just a matter of filling in the holes. Um, so on the housing, the specific things that really changed in the housing um, the easiest thing to point to is at the bottom of the first page, you'll notice there's a parentheses which says priority, medium, cost, low, who, CD specialist. Um, so for everything that was not a continued, so if we're continuing something, we didn't prioritize it. It's just something we're, we're working on and we're going to keep working on. But for everything that was new, um, in this case, develop a utility and infrastructure incentive program, we wanted to have them identify what's the priority low medium high and we you know there's it's all kind of arbitrary there's there's no real hard and fast piece of what's a low and what's a medium and what's a high but we just wanted them to go and really get an idea of you know everything can't be a high priority um, what's the cost um, low we kind of looked at as anything that's like less than a thousand dollars medium would be anything up to like a hundred thousand dollars and your high costs are things that are more than a hundred thousand dollars so a lot of planning and developing programs and stuff are probably low to medium cost. And then who's gonna do it? In this case, it's the CD, uh, community development specialist. So we went through and addressed that for any of the ones that are adopt the new, um, amend the unified development regulations, which is the zoning. Um, and you'll notice that there are priorities, costs, and who's going to be doing it for each one of those going through. Why well, would MAPA streamline things? Or how, I guess I should ask. Uh, it's for streamlining the, the permitting process. Yeah. Um, well, it, it would make the process 
for MAPA really only comes into effect for projects that go to the DRB. And the idea is if we have you are using MAPA, then we can help to eliminate some of the frivolous appeals on things because it, it's going to... Are we talking about on the record review? On the record review, yeah. Okay. Should we say that? I don't know if they're synonymous or not. I didn't think they were, but that's what we're talking about. I mean, I can certainly go through and you know, put a hyphen on the record review. And, uh, yeah, now that we're not doing the, the next layer, we kind of have to add a little bit more information into these. So okay, so this so the the priority listings is is in response to our request, right? I think there was a request for all three pieces: um, the priority, the cost, mm -hmm. and who would be doing it. But I think the initial question was: we've got a lot of things to do. Shouldn't they prioritize which ones are the most important? Right. So yes. Right. Um, just a. Uh, Planning Commission have any thoughts on now that we have that information do people feel like it could be left the way it is in the city plan is this something that we plan to bring to every chapter yes now that now that uh, we have it in this one I've been building it into the to the other ones that's the the thing the energy plan that's why that one is waiting is actually okay. so we can discuss the prioritization is there anything more we want to do with that information? Like any? Do we have this available in like Google Drive or something to put into the table? I know I put in a couple of things. I don't know if I put it in in Word version. If people wanted to like organize it, you mean based on priority? Yeah. Yeah. I went on the Google Drive and I added a ch I added a folder for each one of our chapters. Um, and I know I was putting a few things on. I don't know if I put this one on, but I could put on the yeah, Word version. The old one's up right now. And then if we, like, break out the priority and costs in the table, you could basically just look at it, plot it out, and we could see the quadrants of, like, what what's a low cost and a, a high impact or high priority. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and if you missed the last, I don't know, remember if it was the last meeting we talked about it or one of the earlier ones, we've talked about, we're kind of sticking with this for our development standpoint, but we think when we get there, we're going to reshuffle them. So that way we kind of have goals, you know, aspirations, goals, and then the strategies. So that way all these repeats you know, continue to participate in designated downtown program, it shows up over and over and over again. We really only have to say it once. Um, but we can come up with another way of showing that. So right now that's on that's under more than one goal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that particular one is under a number of goals. Is there anything else in here based, based on responses to our comments? I don't think so. I think you had more comments to the Historic Preservation Group, mm -hmm. who they're actually on, I think, their second, this is their second meeting talking about your comments on those. So um, that'll be tomorrow night. But I don't think we had as many comments on this one. I recall that, that some members, uh, some commissioners have ideas of other things to include. Um, is tonight a good night to talk about any 
further inclusions or anything, or is it something that we're better off waiting until later in the process to do? To phrase this a little bit differently and also more, more broadly, maybe I could just say, does anyone have any anything to talk about for the housing chapter right now? Need anything missing, anything that's here that to work on? The, um, the vacancies is always a little bit of a weird one to benchmark. It's hard to, we want a benchmark that signifies like a healthy market, but it's one that I think has a relatively high margin of error and then can also be a bad if, if our vacancy rate were to just drop to 5%, that would probably be a negative indicator. So I don't know if it's like, I understand what it's, that it's saying we want a healthy vacancy rate, but. Yeah, yeah our, our housing costs are going up because our vacancy rates are right. so low. So our goal is to keep adding housing units so we can make the vacancy rate go up somewhat. But right. our goal is the same to, thing. Like, to have vacant homes. Our goal yeah. is to have homes for people. <laughs> So like, let's make that our goal. Like, let's have homes for people, because that we can measure, right? Yeah, but I mean, I I feel like I want to have something, and maybe it's not vacancy that's related to cost, because units <laughs> doesn't mean affordable. So how do we, you know, yeah. right? The vacancy indicates that there's some pressures on keeping things affordable. So how do we? Is there another benchmark we could use for that? Yeah, if we want to get at affordability, then let's try to measure that. I'm just I'm wary of using vacancy because it can be indicative of a lot of different things, and it's it's a complicated one and one that we don't have very good metrics on. Um, have we? And we talked about this before, and I apologize for not remembering very well, but but we had t we've talked about Downstreet and their involvement. Um, yep, they're on the housing task force. They are okay. So yeah. they've had opportunity for input for. Yeah, and I mean it is it is true. These are they're they're relatively difficult benchmarks to. You know what you want to. You know what you want to get at, but what you usually want to benchmark is, are the things that. Make the change that you want to see. So. Um, If you want to uh, reduce storefront vacancies, you might not benchmark storefront vacancies to be your target. Um, you might go through and say, we want a certain number of jobs created. And if we had more jobs in this area, then we would have more people in that area, and more people would provide more opportunity for businesses to be successful in that area. And that was that's the theory when I was in Barry City, we were looking at because they had 40, 35, 40% vacancies in the downtown in the retail. So the goal was we got to get more jobs. More jobs mean more feet, more feet. It's going to give us better chances that people will show up and be able to have storefront, as opposed to saying our benchmark is the storefront. Our benchmark was the jobs. And the side effect of more jobs was going to be making our goal happen. So it's kind of Ultimately, yes, we are measuring the storefront, but to get there, we're measuring the jobs. And I think that's a little bit of what this is looking at. And it is it is a difficult measure because we don't, it, it's something that fluctuates relatively quickly. It can fluctuate throughout the year. Um, and it's tough to kind of get, get a hold of where it's at, but especially with Airbnb, as soon as you get a vacancy, somebody may decide it's easier to fill it with an Airbnb and now it's not vacant. Just gets complicated. Yeah, it does. But we know we want more housing. We know we want more housing. We, we want know more, we want it affordable. <laughs> we want it all, all types, right? We want yes. ownership. We want rental. Um, feels like we should be able. That's like a good, clean target for people to understand. Like we want this many more homes. And we can ask ourselves how we're doing. 
So that was in here. They right there. Yeah. There's 150 yeah. housing units. Is one of the the targets. One reason why I am not com- that comfortable with that is that I feel like it could end up being under. Like it could be end up. It could end up being too low. Where let's say Sabin's actually gets developed and in a really great way. Like and then all of a sudden this goal is met, but. We kind of still do want to do housing elsewhere within the city. Um, yeah, do we want to have a mi- like a minimum of this many? One of the things that you know mm-hmm. you see in communities is people say, "Well, you, we had this target, and now we've hit it, which means we need we don't want any more housing in our community, right?" Yeah, and so we which don't. Which is, I don't think that's not what we're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's yeah, that's exactly what I'm getting at. Yeah. Yeah, we just want to keep developing housing until we start to see the affordability come back. Um, and I think there was a little bit of 150 housing units in five years and necessary 240 units by 2028, which is the eight-year plan window. Um, it's actually relatively that that those are actually somewhat aggressive numbers. I mean, if we can get savings pasture, great. We we get to hit a home run on getting all those boxes checked all at once because we could put 200 housing units in that lower pasture pretty easy. Um, without that, you know, this year we brought 50 units online, you know, with all the work that was with French Block and uh, the Taylor Street project. But there's only That's so many. For one year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah there's only so many of those. We don't do that most years. And so, and that was only uh, 50 units and, you know, we're trying to do 30 units a year. So it's we don't get a lot of big projects we're working on a lot of small projects so and does um would um i don't know who the right person would be um if if hb or or someone to say like yeah in montpelier we think like this many affordable you know housing units could be developed oh just like looking at the like the land use or the no 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 looking oh. at like the pipeline oh. and like realistically what because we can't we can't expect like the private sector just to generate affordable housing for us right we can't even generate like for profit <laughs> housing yeah. for us so so like seems like asking the people who <coughs> create affordable housing how many affordable housing units should we shoot for yeah well be, yeah Jen Holler, who's at BHCB, is on this committee, so she's <laughs> yeah, she's she's on it. I feel confident in her. So I assume they had some, yeah, reasoning behind this these numbers. Yeah, their so their target in the the housing fund. So they've got the housing trust fund. Their goal is every five years to be able to build that up to two hundred thousand dollars in the trust fund in reserve, so they could spend it on one large project. So think about a 30 unit project every five years from 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 them because they've got downstreet and a lot of these uh, housing Vermont they've got responsibilities over a large geographic area and they hadn't spent a lot of time in Montpelier in the past um, and then kind of French block and this one came up and so they they spent a lot of time here I think they have plans they would like to do the church street uh, or the the Christ Church housing project as their next project, um, which I think would be another great 30 to 40 units. Um, and that'll be in five years, but I think that's going to be more realistically the pace over the next couple of years is that you know, we can count on them for, you know, one year's worth of housing units. And then we're going to have to be creative about how we do the next ones. You know, how do we how do we get <coughs> affordable housing? Um, and certainly, the pilot program we're doing right now for accessory dwelling units shows a lot of promise. Um, we're working out a lot of the the kinks and problems that you know that have shown up in trying to develop these. Um, you know, we made certain assumptions and are learning that not all those assumptions were accurate. But there's still a lot of interest from people in Montpelier who would like to do these accessory dwelling units. Um, you know, they're just costing a little bit more to build, um, and we have a few hurdles to kind of get through from financing. Um, but if we can get through those, there's another opportunity to get, you know, maybe 
about how many have been interested in adding in it? Uh, we had um, over 50 people who were interested in doing them. Not all of them qualified, not all of them, you know, yeah. because you need private capital. The idea of this program is not that it's fully funded, but that we're going to come in and provide $10,000 in loans and $10,000 in grants or $20,000 in grants to a project, and you have to put in the rest of the capital. We thought these would be about $40,000 projects. They're turning out to be $60,000 projects, and so, you know, people need to have equity in their homes um, because you, it's very difficult to get construction loans to be able to do this, so you really have to do a home equity loan to be able to do it, so you know that kind of narrows down who qualifies. So we're, we're working through those, we're learning, but there certainly was a great deal of interest from people who want to do these, um, and I think they've approved the seven or eight that they're gonna do, but we're now starting to look at, all right, what's phase two look like? What, what happens when um, the state housing authority goes away and this is just a city project, a city program? How, can, how much money do we need? How do we keep this program going? Is there a stipulation on use for those units they participate? Like whether they decide to rent it out to someone full time or do Airbnb? Uh, the, yeah, there are restrictions on the Airbnb okay. for, for a couple of, for a number of years. I can't remember whether it's up to five years. I can't remember. Um, and then there's, uh, there can be an income requirement too because we're using community development block grant funding. Those restrictions go away when we've got a new program that's not using that source of funding. Then, then we've got more flexibility, um, but then we don't have that funding. Um, but it was good that there was so much interest in being able to do it. So um, people are not opposed to adding units either over their garages or um, subdividing space out of a larger home. And would any of these, like these programs, some of them are a little bit vague, but is there, we talked about the idea of like a, the, the, the small developers boot camp or enabling people to do some of these things, um, taking advantage of the skill, some of the skill sets they might have. It may not be that they're gonna do their, the plumbing, but like, you know, the idea being if, if, if we're not gonna build things ourselves here, no one is coming. We, we, don't, we don't have like a big developer that's going to come to Montpelier and do something. So like, they just start looking at economics and being like, hey, this isn't that hard. Like, let's do it. Um, I'm trying to move through. And some of these, you know, may may capture that, like the these sort of outreach type programs. But it's unclear to me what the the content is. I. I th I think it could it would it would be fine to add something new to be specific about that. Just like I mean maybe maybe this will we can do some yeah, I think amendments we, we later. Added, yeah, I mean we added one that talked about uh, new housing marketing and outreach to market incentives right. to strategies and strategies to builders. I don't know if we've got one that and I don't know if we would have the skills to do the education of them. They usually know more about this than we do. Be interesting yeah, to see if, like if our partners the, have bringing in like the incremental development alliance, which I thought we were applying for MPG for. But uh, what was that group called? Uh, Incremental Development Alliance. They, I think their their head person's name is um, John Anderson. So if they come, we may need to like be like, not that John Anderson, <laughs> not that John Anderson. Yeah, I'm not aware of their their stuff, but that's that. Certainly, we can see what. But for for any of these goals, are we? Uh, are you thinking as as we develop these out that, that some of the goals would have some like kind of softer language, like something like facilitate or assist with the um, you know, community to 
Like what I'm talking about is like the city being in a supportive role, but not necessarily having the lead, but that's still being a goal in the plan. Yeah, if we can come in and make it specific as to what our role is, you know, if it's if it's organize a meeting or if it's. Um, Cause is, is that what you're imagining, John, for this? Hmm? You're imagining like the city's like in a supportive role, but not necessarily the primary organizer of the thing. Yeah, it may be like a, you know, a three part like multi day workshop that they facilitate and apply for or get some of the funding to bring in the, the trainers or Oh, okay, so you are thinking of the city though is taking the, the taking point or, yeah. Right. I wasn't thinking we'd get like Mike's gonna go show people how to like swing a hammer in, <laughs> that would be poor. Be, be, be a bad idea. Unless you, yeah, I don't know, you may be, you know, an accomplished home builder, Mike. No, right person. not too much. <laughs> My wife is pretty talented, but... Did you put on a workshop so. on teaching people how to hay, though? I That's could definitely <laughs> teach people how to hay. How to fix a broken knotter on your hay baler. Step one, learn what a knotter is. <laughs> <laughs> They do like the, they give you, they help you through all your pro formas and they show you the pitfalls of like, oh, when you add this, then you have to meet this ADA requirement, which will add this cost. And like, it seems very pragmatic. Was it working with the developing, the developers, or is it working with the contractors, or is it an education for the homeowners? It's for whoever might be interested in being a developer of like a four unit giving them a bit more of that confidence and support. Mm -hmm. And they might have, you know, they might know something about design, they might know something about the process. Yeah, so, it sounds a little bit like what we're doing right now for the accessory dwelling units. Right. Because that's part of the way that program works is we educate the homeowners and try to get them over the barriers. And the barriers in the past have been people, you know, I've got equity, I've got a house, but I don't know the first thing about how to build an accessory dwelling unit. I don't know how to get permits. Um, I don't know how to hire a contractor. I don't want to hire somebody and then mm -hmm. find out it's $80,000 when I thought it was only going to be twenty five. And so that's a little bit of what the accessory dwelling unit program would be. But I guess this is kind of along that same line. It's just broadening it out to people who may have an interest in other. Yeah, exactly. Or I have a question about the how the chapters speak to each other, I guess. So as an example, one of the goals increase the number of neighborhoods that have a park or recreation area within half a mile of its edge. I know that that's also a goal and it's coming from the Parks Commission. So are are the goals gonna be are there goals that will make an appearance in multiple chapters that will have different strategies under them from different chapters that are somehow connected? Is that something that you're doing as you put them together, yes. or is that something we should also be? Yeah, the challenge the challenge we have right now is that obviously these are the first ones, so we kind of have to make an right. assumption about what's going to appear in a, in a later right. in a later chapter. But y yes, the idea is that these would be nested in in order to make our, our housing goals work, we need to have our parks commission and our parks goals accomplish theirs. And right. if we wanna have well-connected neighborhoods to the downtown, then the transportation committee is gonna have to give us complete streets and sidewalks and bike lanes. Mm -hmm. But as this gets back to the housing committee um, and you know the housing task force, they're not really gonna be working on, on that. We recognize those as their goals, but we accomplish our goals by supporting the transportation committee. And so we're going to just need to keep an eye that these, as we work our way through, if the park's goal is slightly different, if they don't use the word green print or whatever in their plan, if it becomes a park's plan or something else, then we'll just have to come back and make sure that we match things up in the end. So. Okay. It also seems like we should just say, like, here's where we want housing. As opposed to adding all of these qualifiers and then figuring out where that's supposed to be. Yeah, no. it, yeah. I guess what, one it's of like the, our, yeah, which, which is leading which one? Are we putting the houses near the parks or are we adding parks near the housing? 
in this case, I know that the Parks Commission has interest in adding more parks because we have one great, wonderful park, and we've got North Branch, which is a wonderful park, but they're all kind of in the same area. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of neighborhoods that exist today that don't have parklands. So, you know, can we get a park in Sabin's Pasture? Can we get a park on the other side of the river um, near Berlin Street? Um, because that's a there's a large area with a lot of people and there are no parks on that side. So in this case, it's putting parks near housing, but we can look at it the other way around, putting houses near parks too. Well, if it's something that I, this goal ultimately might not, when we get to the end and we're looking at the community services chapter two, maybe this doesn't even belong here anymore because it's really addressed somewhere else. Or about land use. Like or, when we're just right. pointing out where we want right. these things, that we yeah. don't have to. Yep, and if we, yeah, absolutely. If we find there's just a better place, in the same way that we talked about arts and culture, we kind of decided it's better somewhere else. We may just decide this is great, but there isn't anything in Aspiration B that the Housing Committee has to do. So maybe we can just pluck that right out, drop that right into the land use plan, and say our goal in the land use plan is to have housing and parks and we're going to address that in our plan here and take it out of here. I'm good with however this. That's actually a pretty good segue to, to just to ask about, about when you think we'll start on the land use plan. Do you think you mark it on the sheet? Uh, it's one of the ones that would be in the, of the five that would be starting in February. Obviously, I can't start all five of them at the same time. Um, but There's five days in a work There are five days. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It'll depend a little bit on how much time we end up having to spend on the public hearing in the next meeting. Okay. Um, you know, is that something that we move on relatively quickly to the city council, or is that something that we have to work and put some more time into? Um, we'll probably lose a meeting in February um, talking about our responses to what we hear in the next meeting. But we will be working on these other chapters. I'll be shooting for governance. Governance may wait a, a little bit longer on that one just because we're going to be switching councils as of the town meeting day. So of these five, I'll probably work on arts and culture and community services. Um, think about the timing with a couple of retirements showing up for public safety and CJC and maybe arts and culture and public safety that would be the f two first two that I would prioritize then community services okay then land use and governance okay. so we can, can wait and, and there are going to be plenty of opportunities like we said every, every time we've worked on these um, there's nothing that says these are done at any point until they're in the city council's hands. So anyone who comes up with new things that legislative changes that makes another program viable or, or a good opportunity for us, we can always add it in after our public hearings or even before our public hearings. So as I said, I hope hopefully we you know, as we said, we've got housing done, historic should be done. You should be getting energy and transportation in, in February. Um, and I think that gets us a good okay. good process moving forward. Economic development, utilities and facilities shortly thereafter. Well, do we have do we have any changes? I mean I have I have one that I would suggest. Uh, which is just as we were talking about before on the benchmark on the under aspiration A and goal A in the first page to add the word minimum before net increase so um, or, or something like a minimum net increase of 150 permanent housing units and I haven't really combed this if there are any other similar places but I think that that could be important if we have a lot of success but of course we as we discussed, we wouldn't want to stop a good thing just because we're we've had some success. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, I like the minimum. 
And I don't know if we want to replace the vacancies with like something around a, a target for like a mix of part rental, part ownership, or part um, multi-unit and single family or yeah, I mean, I, I know that it's, I get your point about it's a weird thing to, like, want to increase, and maybe it's not the perfect measure, but I, yeah, I guess I'm just struggling with thinking of something else that wouldn't be cumbersome to measure that's, yeah, has some, has some relevance to what the, you know, the tight, to, to having a tight housing market, I don't know. So I, I guess I would favor leaving vacancy in there, but if someone can come up with something, I mean, because, yeah, the mix of rental and home ownership might be helpful, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's affordable rental either, so I don't know. Yeah, well, the more the more housing we get, any kind should, assuming it's not replacing other housing. Right, right, it, it should, yeah, you know? I and mean, it probably will, but I, yeah. And it's something that we, as a city, you know, have some impact on, whereas the vacancy rate Aside from increasing the housing supply, there's not not much we can do about vacancy rate unless we make Montpelier terribly yeah, un undesirable, true. right? True. Yeah, yeah, that would be one way to meet that goal. Yes. Get a, some kind of like paper mill sulfur yeah. situation. Yeah, if we keep if we keep increasing the costs, then yeah, then it'll become so unaffordable that we'll end up with five percent vacancies, yeah. and we, we will we'll be. Them. We could do, we could have a target to increase um, some of the housing units to be permanently affordable. I'm thinking under goal C. Goal C doesn't have a benchmark yet. I know adding adding one or um, you know maintain a mix of housing types, sizes, occupancies, and levels of affordability, and having at least one strategy there, or a benchmark or something that's specific that's to yeah. affordable yeah. housing. I've been trying to think of what that might be. And that's yeah. where I thought, like, Jen might be able to be like, this is what we can, this is a reasonable goal for, like, affordable housing in terms of work. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, I think we've talked about this before, but I mean, one problem popular has is that we do have some affordable housing that's subsidized, and we have a lot of housing that's, if you can afford it, that's great, but the middle income, and lower middle income housing, where maybe you have enough income where you don't qualify for help, that seems like a void. Yeah, there are not a lot of starter homes. Yeah. I have, but I, I, we just don't have a lot of home development at all, right? Yeah, we, yeah, the, certainly not in the single family homes. Um, most of what we get built are apartments. Um, units here, units there, but not a lot of single family homes. And a lot of it goes back to we don't have a lot of land. Um, when we look at a lot of the, the, the books on, you know, kind of getting a good pipeline for housing development, usually it goes back to having 24 to 36 months of available building lots ready to go. And we pretty much have none. I mean, we don't have these subdivisions that are platted. And, you know, when the market's ready, we'll start building on that subdivision because it's already owned by the developer. It's all ready to go. We just have to... We don't have any of that. Um, there was a little bit of that up in Stonewall Meadows when FECTO had an approved subdivision up there. Um, but most of that has kind of fallen away now, and we don't have any land area. If, you, if we were talking major metropolitan areas, that's what they're looking at is the, a number of building, building lots that are available for construction because then the construction of homes kind of, when the market demands it, they run in and they build a bunch of houses. But when we need housing, we've got to run out and buy land, subdivide the land, and we just don't have, once you've added all those costs in, what's coming out the other end is really expensive. So do we have an idea for? Let's figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 figure out how to make more housing. So yeah, so that was one of the reasons we've looked at if, if the city were able to help a developer um, acquire Saban's Pasture, then we could help plat Saban's Pasture, and then we could sit back and say, all right, now we've got an opportunity to have that 
24 to 36 months of available building lots and and help to make that happen but that's kind of a one one shot deal um, if we can make something like that happen so we'll see what we can come up with in the next eight years do you think it would i mean okay so so by bringing that up how do you think we could incorporate that if we wanted to like could we do you, could we make a goal of the city doing that of trying to <laughs> put uh, pasture. pasture. I mean, oh. or, we could or, name a or, couple. I others. mean, you can there is Crestview, but Crestview has always been yeah. an area which has been just talked about for more higher end homes. It's it's less likely to support the the affordable housing. Um, not saying it couldn't incorporate some, but it's an area that would be a lot more expensive to build and would be because of the views and because of the location would be more likely to have. Um, larger yeah. homes but it's also yeah, we we've said we want all price price ranges so we would support that but something like a goal of the city taking an active role in subdividing land and or a public private partnership to subdivide available parcels we have like elements of that in here yeah i was gonna say that's what i was reading through to see if there were some elements in there because that's been our goal. Our goal has been to partner with somebody. We, we really don't want to get ourselves involved as developers. You know, governments make terrible developers, so we'd really be better off to try to um, find somebody who wants to do it and then support their, their efforts. That's why we have TIF. That's why we have um, tax stabilization and other efforts, because we could go through and say, we can, we can provide assistance on our end to reduce your costs is there anything um, more from like a um, like form based code or other regulatory issues that we could tackle to, to help things at least from your perspective I haven't heard that the regulations have been a significant, certainly not with the new regulations, that the regulations are a significant barrier. Um, but, you know, certainly the fact that we've got, you know, we're matching our densities at 90%. Um, when we've looked at projects and the p potential of projects, it's usually not the zoning. Um, you know, the the folks that purchased the VCFA parcel and are looking at the numbers there, you know, they're looking at putting 30 to 40 units on a parcel that has a density that has available 100. So, you know, the zoning really isn't going to be a barrier to fitting what they want. It's really the fact that it's the topography that makes it impossible to develop that much more. Well, I mean, I'm in support of your idea to suggest that they add some, or just add something about the city assisting with, I don't know if that's already been, yeah. So if there's one in here about, let's see where it goes, on the second, on the back of the first page, um, to support individual private housing projects and public private partnerships. That's in there. Mm -hmm. Could we consolidate a, a lot of these, like, there are a lot of the word sprink for sprinkler ordinance is in here a lot. Can we and I think that might actually take away from some of the other ones because there's just a ton of stuff here. Like if we're continuing programs, how about we say we're going to continue these twelve programs? <laughs> yeah, and I think that that'll come in with the reorganization. I think yeah. the the thought process was for us to be able to think about all the things that we would do to achieve goal day. What are all the things we would do to increase the rental? housing development mm -hmm. and then we'll probably reorganize them once we get to the presentation part to go through and say here down here in the bottom are all the things we're going to continue to do up here at the top these are our highest priority new things here are medium priority new things here are low priority new things um, and by combining all the strategies into one a bunch of them are going to go away because it's probably a high priority here and a high priority here and a high priority here it's going to still come out as a high priority for this new idea. 
Yeah, those are just the duplicate. I was looking at the sprinkler ones too because it's the exact same strategy in more than one place. Like in, sprinkler with more sprinkler? Yeah. <laughs> just, Barb, yeah, Barb yeah, so I think that was, very, was very adamant about amending the sprinkler ordinance in the past. So. Right. And there's, so there's a sprinkler ordinance and then there's a sprinkler incentive program, um, which are kind of two separate but related items. But they both show up twice. They all show up multiple times. Or more than twice. Yeah, so I think that having it reorganized like that before we start figuring out where there's overlap between the chapters and making sure that they make sense together is going to be really helpful because it'll it'll narrow the list down a little bit and make it a lot easier to look at. Yes, and yeah, and once so we've we got really it, we can see what the high priorities are overall and how yep. they match and how they or how they don't match or where there's conflict because this is a really long list. Which is so yes, and we yes, and we spent a lot of time with each group when we worked with them to kind of go through and, and try to get them to think outside the box because so many discussions are always like, well, we want to support this, we want to encourage this, and we're like, well, you can't just encourage something. We really have to start thinking about what specifically, you know, think outside the box, think about tax stabilizations, think about um, other ways we can incentivize things, um, and. These were some of these were these were all the lists of things. Some of the things we already do, and a number of things that, like neighborhood development areas, that would be something new. For our, for this um, policy around um, committed to affirmatively furthering fair housing and its implementation of all of its programs Where are you? projects. Um, so goal D. Yeah, aspiration D. Aspiration D, sorry. Yeah. Wondering like, is there something is there something like more we can do to make Montpelier just more welcoming to diverse populations as opposed to like a, a policy that I don't know like yeah that, that's great that we should have that but do we want something more than that for Montpelier like do we really expect adopting a, a, a is this gonna how far is this gonna get us towards like this aspiration or an aspiration of really welcoming more people and more d a diverse population to Montpelier. I'm worried that we're not... So it feels like we should be doing more. I don't know what it is. It's just... So there will be, and, and maybe there needs to be more here, but there is, in the governance chapter is when we're going to have... Um, the, the city has a equity and justice committee, I believe that's the name of it. And that'll be discussed a lot in, in the governance chapter, I think, with how the entire government are we being equitable. Um, but certainly the affirmatively furthering fair housing is, is something that's specific to housing. Um, and it was a little bit of a surprise to me that there isn't a formal policy on that. It's, it's really kind of... It's an item that you get evaluated on based on your actions. Um, so it's more than just having a policy, but it would be helpful to have a policy that says this is what it is. So people can call you out on it if you don't do it. If you come and say, hey, our policy is we're going to do this, and we aren't doing it in this case. Um, but affirmatively furthering fair housing is requirement for community development and HUD grants. Um, so, in the very least, we should have a policy, and and um, Kevin, the, who's the community development specialist, has been working with um, somebody, I think, over at CBOEO and trying to come up with an actual policy that could be adopted by the council that would really lay out what it means to be furthering fair housing. So that was one step that we felt we would at least be able to do is formal, formally adopt the policy on that. But then it's, it's really it's such an ambiguous aspiration. Um, you kind of like, know it when you see it. And do we want like a goal around housing for refugees, for example? 
and that's I think that would be a question of I think the one question that would come up with that that pro would probably come up is we're having problems housing for the residents we have not that my or I think anyone in town is opposed to settling refugees but I think the one question would be is it appropriate when we have zero percent vacancy to try to encourage people more people to move to a town with zero percent vacancies I think we want more housing so they can yeah I think that's what he's saying is you know, building the housing for building them. the housing to make it happen yeah I would love to have the vacancy that we could fill it um, but so are we are we interested in kicking back some of these things to the housing committee again or what what are we Like there's that much yeah. needs to go back. Um, some of this all just spills into other sections. Anyway. Yeah, that's I'm what just, I was gonna say. I feel like we, we may see like stall of everything. We have plenty to work with. I, don't I think, think if we can, we can note that for land use even, and look and explore that when we do the land use chapter. Because I, I had mentioned before, treatment housing um, or recovery housing rather in town and. Um, we haven't put it in the housing chapter yet. I'm keeping it in mind to right. at least for the land use chapter. I think it's a good idea to incorporate or to ask the question, anyways, of how you can incorporate diversity and equity efforts into any because it wasn't in the there wasn't a mention of it in the one we did before the um, historic and cultural and arts and cultural. There wasn't a mention of right. diverse art, so like. Keeping that in mind and asking the question for each chapter, I think, is a good idea. Whether or not like an actual aspiration comes out of it, I'm not sure, but I think that's a good idea. So we should continue to ask that question, and where appropriate, we should put in something. Did you catch that, Mike? Yeah, I was just. Yeah, I'm thinking. I was thinking a little bit of, of both of the, both of the comments we we have in the aspiration. I think we capture capture it better in the aspiration than we do in our goals about we want to have housing for all. And I think that we just need to do a better job of explaining what's captured in housing for all, including treatment, um, uh, the community justice center (CJC). They work a lot with people in re um, reintegration. And so, you know, we need to have, you know, we, we have an aspiration to have housing for all. We aren't just um, coming up with a housing for, sub, for a subset of the county or the community, um, which would obviously start to impact and reflect on refugees and what our policies are towards these other groups that are maybe disproportionately affected by other policies that we have. So. Um, it's in our aspiration, but I think it doesn't flow through to our goals, and maybe that's a small failure that's in there right now. Yeah, I'd, I'd want to avoid like the situation in Rutland, I think, where the mayor sort of went out on his own and caused this whole thing. I feel like we should just be very clear as a community we're welcoming. Yeah. Okay. There's a group uh, that's working to like help house asylum seekers while they hear their asylum cases. I don't know if that would be helpful. Central Vermont. Something. So I don't know if they would have any. I mean, I'm happy to reach out to them if you think that would be helpful, if they have any ideas on what could be put Definitely. into the city plan. Okay. I can do that. Well, that's a good a, idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah these, are, these are things we can put in the land use plan. Yeah, these are things we can put in the land use plan, so yeah. we can have some, and we'll be doing that ourselves. So, yeah. But I do think it. I think that comes in here in that housing yeah. for all. We, we and and I'll put down some notes. See if there's something we can okay. massage to get in this <clears throat> case of identifying and identifying barriers. There's a um, being welcoming strategy. The first strategy under that one is 
sponsor or support at least one housing planning effort to identify community housing needs or to study impediments to fair housing before 2025. Maybe we could say specifically with an eye for served or marginalized communities or something. Hopefully that's implied by fair housing. Mm. Well, the housing planning effort. Oh no, never. Okay. Yeah, usually these <coughs> usually these get sponsored through Downstreet, and so they're the ones who kind of ask to have that inserted because it helps them to be able to get grant funding if they can show that it's in their plan. So. <clears throat> this should be basically laying the groundwork for their, you know, once every 10 years, they'll do a, another assessment. Okay, so I've only heard one definite change, and that's the inclusion of the word minimum, and then we have some things to look into. So one more time, does anyone have any definite changes they want to make. They're not looking to John had made a recommendation about the, the recommended training opportunities from like Incremental Development Alliance. So I'll take a look, see what I can come up with a strategy. Okay. To kind of insert that. Oh, great. That would be great. Uh, any more? We need to approve the chapter at this point, or uh, is that not necessary? I guess you guys can approve it. I mean, I've got a column here for PC approved, just knowing that it's this is just basically getting it to a point where this is one that we can consider is done until we start getting into the public hearing process. Okay. I don't think we need to do it, but we, I don't think so. in, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> but because for one thing, we're talking about reorganizing it later to move the strategy things around, right? Yeah. So that will be And then once we have all of the chapters, the cleanup yeah. okay. across them, I think it's going to take that to get to the point of make a saying approved. Make a motion to feel comfortable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, you motion to stop talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put it to bed. I know what I was to put it to bed. Yeah. So. I just wanted to do a clean transition to something else. Okay. Well. Done for now. We'll say done for now with those with those items we've discussed tonight. So that's good. Uh, I have an item that. Uh, so I'm gonna move on, but before we get to. Uh, Discussion of the public hearing. This is kind of related to that, actually, and but also something I probably should have mentioned earlier. Comments from the chair. Uh, I will not be able to be here on February 24th, which is the second Monday of February. Um, we tend to do vacation on um, town hall meeting week. Uh, so, with that said, we'll have the hearing next time, and then um, and then we'll have a meeting. Right. Yeah. Well, the the hearing on the twenty seventh, yeah. and we have a meeting on the tenth. We ha yeah February tenth. So for that February tenth meeting, I'll be here, and we'll, okay. we'll get back into some of this, and then I'll coordinate with Aaron for uh, February twenty fourth to run that meeting. So sure. just a yeah a heads up well in advance, uh, just so everyone knows. And it looks like around that time we'll be uh, uh, looking at what energy or um, economic development transportation. transportation so we're we'll looking at one of those yes. around yeah, around you'll have historic you preservation back me. you'll have or yeah historic resources back yeah but I'm thinking based on our discussion tonight and this is something maybe I'll send out a refresher email after this room just to sort of um, follow-up email after tonight but uh it's looking like yeah we'll probably we'll, let's not plan to get into the land use plan until basically march and because that things that lets a lot of things fall into place maybe even late march but we can 
Because, yeah, we'll have these other chapters to look at in the meantime. Okay, so, so with that in mind, let's talk about next meeting, which is the public hearing on design review, which we've gone over quite a lot. Uh, in addition to sort of a heads up for the next few meetings, I'll also try to send out a refresher about where we are in design review. But we can also talk about talk about that. Like, what are you thinking, Mike? What to expect next time? Um, so we have prepared a couple hundred letters. You'll get one here in the design review district or proposed either the existing or the proposed. Um, so we will be sending out letters to everybody in the district. They're all sitting down on the desk. They'll be mailed out tomorrow. Um, so knowing that, it'll probably get some, some amount of interest. So um, I think it's just really kind of a wait and see. I know Historic Preservation and Meredith will be here for the meeting. Um, we'll go through the presentation that they did before um, just to get everybody up to speed on what's being proposed. And then really, I think these are always, I mean, a couple of you have been through this before with the zoning update. You just never know where this is going to go and what people are going to latch on to and what's going to be the issues. And in some cases, it's something fairly easy to go through and say, okay, you know, we made these three proposals and people really don't like this piece so we can take that piece out um, sometimes it's easy sometimes it's complicated so is, this in, is it going to include the boundary the it's new boundary? to discuss both yeah both the, the boundary change boundary. and the new the new regulations and maybe people focus on one maybe we hear about both um, so is, is Meredith planning to to do most of the presenting or should we yeah, prepare presents the designer the boundary um, yeah, we would probably, I would probably have to be prepared to talk about the boundary. I'll probably work with her on, on okay. looking at the PowerPoint and see if we could add in that discussion. Um, and we'll see. We, As I said, we sent out letters to everybody who is either in or is going to be added in, just so everybody has, you know. Our jobs mostly are to just listen and take notes. Yep, yeah, take, take the input and see what people... You know, and, and if we start to hear a lot about one thing, you know, see if people have comments, you know, make sure people are aware of the other thing to go and think, you know, all we've heard about is the map. Does anyone have any thoughts on what the actual new regulations say um, or vice versa? But I think probably I would imagine most of the conversation, it, certainly the last time we did this, most of the conversation was based on who who is new to the district and people who are new to the district weren't happy with it. And... Cliff Street was not happy with it. The Cliff Street didn't want to remain, and the new areas didn't want to get added in, so. We've left them out. And we've left them out. So, so. they're going to come and thank us, right? <laughs> they may. I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> do we have a good new map with the final boundary? And We do. Okay. Yep. Yep. And it's online, so if there's anyone listening or anyone here who wants to go and take a look, if you go onto the front web page, uh, city web page uh, on the left as you scroll down a little bit there's a list of probably eight or nine different things one of which says design review proposal and if you click on that they'll have the map and the rules okay sounds great so, so with that uh, maybe we can adjourn early and everyone can go and of course <laughs> Study for the hearing. Just gonna hang out for a half hour. Yeah, that's <laughs> if you'd like to hang the out for half an hour, you can. Yeah, yeah. Like my schedule is set. So, <laughs> so uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. And okay. For, uh, moved by John, seconded by Stephanie. And uh, with that, what's the saying? Let's go home. Let's go home. <laughs>